Yeah, this is Scotty with Mobile RV Services. Uh, we're going to shoot this video because we could not find a video on this ICM soft start for the General Electric uh, model. So all of you guys out there that's got a 2023 uh, looking for a video, there is no video for the lines. Uh, it comes with no instructions, so you're on your own. And uh, basically, we're going to walk you through uh, and... Our first test, uh, we wired it up uh, successfully, but we're going to show you how the Peacemaker uh, and all that stuff is going to help bench test this. And we're actually going to test the system before we even uh, get, oh God, no, that's a sleeper screw. Before we even take this unit for installation, I'm going to confirm that the amp draw, the output, everything is going to be running as is designed. Now, you can go ahead and run screws and take the fan loose. And I've seen a lot of people install these a lot of different ways and they work their butt. They got all these extensions trying to get, listen, why not use you some alien tape and bond that right here. Good old, as seen on TV, alien tape. We're gonna bond that first thing right now so we're going to put you on pause we're going to bond that and then we're going to get these connections uh, ready to be made as you can see i use two sides of alien tape and this stuff if this stuff will hold a block to a wall it's definitely going to hold this soft start and you don't want to mount anything upside down because the flashing codes is all up front so you don't want to be trying to read this upside down so we want to place it in a place where it's away from our frame in here and our wires uh, most important you don't want me to put it at the bottom to where these wires would be in a bad bend just place it right there press really hard and that alien tape i'm serious it would literally it would destroy this it, if i tried to take this off it would We'll rip the foam off. All right, let's talk about our wiring here. There's no instructions at all. Okay, we're gonna make this very simple. With the GE system, it's gonna call for black to go on uh, the, what is this called, Austin? Overload. Yep, the overload. All right, then we're gonna go red on our hertz. And then we're going to go our white on our hertz. Okay, I'm nothing. See, uh, basically, the camera can't get in there to see. I put my reds, uh, uh, red and white, on my hertz. Now I put my black on. I keep wanting to call this a high limit switch, but it's not. It's called a what sound? Overload switch. Yeah, the overload switch. Yeah, it's it, that was used to call a high limit switch, uh, it, and it, it's it is. You do got to remove the cap, guys, because here's the only tricky thing about this uh, whole wire up. All right, this is why you're watching the video. You're, you're uh, you, you don't know how to make this last connection, and we figured out uh why we couldn't make that last connection on that ac over there showing the new ac over there we have already fired that ac up and tested it so what you got to do is you got to come in here one thing this don't plug up to nothing so take my old rusty wire snippers or other snippers from the surface stand that would make do that's what we got. What we're gonna do here is called a coal miner three-way splitter. And that's, I'm gonna use one brandy to make a three-way connection. So come back uh, here to where you can get a little meat. You got enough room to work with here. And you just wanna skin this back just enough to, to make connection because it's actually getting wired right back together. You don't want no hairs or stringing so go ahead and put that right hand twist on it and, and this is the trick guys here it comes wait for it wait for it wait for it the three way and 
get him lined up as best as we can. Deep seat. And this is where I'm going to grab my pliers, my crampers. Don't go cheap on crampers, guys. Get you a good set. If you're going to be RV tech, crampers, electrical connectors, you've got to use the right stuff. If I was putting a 110 connector on this, this would fry in a heartbeat. You got to know the difference in a 110 connector and a 12 volt connector. Now, see, this end is not going to plug up. Don't need to make no fancy end of this because doing our three-way ordeal. Now listen, you do not want to make the mistake like I seen a guy make one time. I'm going to run that instead of going over the motor, listen, that person had to uh, 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 stabilize it up here and it was crazy. Listen, run it through all of your current zip ties under the fan motor we can straighten up the wires once we get it over there. This way it goes under the fan, as is designed. Held out of the way. It goes through a hole here. Comes up through here. And it just, this gives it a professional touch, you know. And it's the way it is, it's supposed to be installed. So guys, just remember, it was just this uh, white uh, three-way uh, connection that was stopping you on the install. And since there's not a video up, we're gonna try to get this one uh, as to many as people as we can. I'm not popular yet, but we are the leading service in Florida and we're seven days a week. You can call 904-263-8314. Um, we service all of northern Florida. We have chassis experts. All right, guys, uh, but here's how we can test. Uh, we don't just come out and install this stuff. This, uh, we have special diagnosis uh, tools that most people don't have access to. We have to make a lot of our stuff. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is going, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in to this AC unit and there's not an RV here. There's one parked over there by, by the beside the house, but we are the RV control board. We are the thermostat. I have 119 volts, that's above 110. I am plugged into an AC unit. I can turn the fan on high, low, or my compressor, so let's test it. Fan came on immediately. Don't want to be too jumpy with these things. Let's go to high fan. High fan sounded really good. Now I'm going to turn the compressor on here and the, uh, the Dometic AC Evolution coming brand new out of the box with 11.9 amp drive. That's a failed unit. Even though it's blowing negative 35 degrees, it is failed. But Hear this compressor firing up? Ooh, shot up there. It should settle around 12.3. Once it gets running here, she fired right up. Though. Now, we'll get a laser reading on this. We'll do a 25 minute run test. I'm gonna set this down, Austin. I can set it and watch the measurements and get a laser. Temperature here in Melrose, Florida is 88.6 degrees. Um, it's going down immediately. So uh, look, there's our amp draw, look, 12.3. It, it was on 12.3 perfect. So it's not like the, the, the Dometics. The GE actually makes a good air conditioner. Uh, so, uh, Guys, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, I really thought that on this video we would find a dirty amp draw on one of these ACs. They're both brand new out of the box from the manufacturer. But uh, we're getting a lot of bad Dometic products. Uh, see, there's our perfect amp draw. Now look, I can change my fan to low. Now listen, everything sounds perfect. Or can you see how the amp draw, my energy, it's, this is very efficient unit. Now I'm going to shoot it up to high. Three, two, one. Turn it down low. Let's turn the fan off. I mean
me to turn the fan to low. And let's just turn this compressor off. Watch this compressor drop slowly. Soft start slower. Soft start can do it. She's got one now. This is running on the low fan. We have perfect readings on everything. The volume's not, and the power's not jumping all over the place. That indicates to me the motor's fine, uh, or that number would be jumping all over the place. It sounds perfect. I fan really, and, and it, it don't use much more power on I fan. But that's how you really diagnose the AC. So we was condensing uh, 69 degrees and it is 88 degrees and that wasn't even a 10 minute run test.